Thank you. Can you hear me? So, um, thank you for giving me the, the possibility to present my work here. Um, I'm, my career path took me from research to education, in particular medical education. And what I would like to do today is to give you um, talk about three points that are really relevant to this transition. So first, I will present how I made this move, insisting on what were the key moments and the key transition points. Then the second, I would like to tell you a little bit more about what I do, what my day-to-day -day business is. And then at the, in the last part of my presentation, I would like to talk about a concept or an idea that for me is really important with respect to how I think about my position and especially how I think about developing it in the future. So my career started in a very traditional way. I did a master's in um, biology in Basel. And actually, just as a small anecdote, um, Howard was uh, one of the professors teaching me. Stephen was one of the PhD students organizing the practical work. And Nicole was sitting next to me in the classes. So the, it's a small world. I then moved on to do a PhD, working in fission yeast cell division. And then I started a postdoc in Cambridge looking at the eye development in Drosophila. So up to this point, everything had gone really well. I had good papers during my PhD. I, um, I, I, I had published well. I had kind of an idea where I wanted to go. And then I realized, or I, at least somehow I realized, that this passion or this drive, this enthusiasm for science that you really need to keep going, and especially to keep going in the long run, had gone. But somehow what happens is, although this kind of starts to take shape, you're probably the last person to realize that your enthusiasm has, has gone. Because you have this kind of clear idea of where you want to go, and you have this classical academic path in front of you. And sometimes when this happens, what you need is for somebody to tell you that this is not going anywhere. So at least figuratively speaking, you need somebody to kick you in the butt. And so when this happens, so I think that's the first thing for me was very important, you should really take a step back, think about what you would like to do, and maybe replan. So that's when the decision really hit me that uh, I would, don't want to stay in academic science in the long run. What did I do next? I moved into bioinformatics. Now, I would lie if I pretended that I had a really clear idea of where this is going to lead me, but to me, bioinformatics was a very pragmatic and opportunistic choice. It is trendy, or it was, and it still is trendy, so this was the time the human genome was being sequenced. Um, I had local opportunities. I was living in Cambridge, and the Sanger Institute is one of the world's leading institutes in genomics, so it was easy for me um, to make the step. Bioinformatics has a service component, so I could see, see a way out of academic research, because something like consulting, working in a platform, or um, along these lines. It is learnable, so I could actually get books and teach myself computing, informatics, programming, statistic analysis. And since the, idea, the, the domain was quite trendy, it was not too difficult to get grants. So I obtained a fellowship and did a postdoc in bioinformatics at the Sanger Institute. Now after this, I moved to TDHH in Zurich to work as a lab manager. So the selling point, or what really was my strength at the time, was clearly the bioinformatics. That's why I got the job. Now, being a lab manager, I had the opportunity to teach PhD students, to supervise PhD students, technicians, technician apprentices, and I also started to take over some lectures from the professors in the institute. And this is the time when the idea of actually wanting to move towards education or teaching in general was taking shape. So I then managed, within the same institute, to get a lecture position. Now, this lecture position was composed of 50% teaching, and 50% lab work. So the teaching meant I was giving lectures, bachelor, master level. I was, supervised, I was a student advisor. I was also um, working on the building up of the new master curriculum in biochemistry. And I was a member of the teaching commission of the department. So this transition period for me was really important because that's the time when I started to be able to you know, get my feet into education and teaching. However, I quickly realized that this 50-50% solution wasn't really satisfactory for me because 50% lab work doesn't get you anywhere and 50% teaching was not enough to really make the transition. So to find a way out of this situation, I applied for grants like you do in 
lab search. So I obtained a grant to develop an e-learning project and I was able to finance 50% of my time for two years through this grant. And for me, this grant, I think, was really the big, the most important turning point in my career because this is really when I could make the step from teaching, uh, from research to teaching. Because first of all, it allowed me to acquire all the expertise I needed, especially doing the work myself from scratch, from conceiving the whole project to really implementing it. And the second point, it also allowed me to present my work in different places at different conferences. And at one of these conferences, I met the person who then turned out to be my future boss one or two years later. So just to say how important networking is wherever you work. And when I look back at these, um, these, these years, the, the thing that really glued things together was the informatics. But initially, this wasn't really a conscious choice. This was something more coming out of pragmatism or something I like doing. So this idea, I think, was mentioned before this morning. Even if you don't have a clear idea of where you want to go, start by doing the things you like doing, you enjoy, and then eventually things will come together. And for me, this was informatics giving me the job as a lab manager, and then also informatics to allow me to combine teaching with technology in the domain of e-learning. And this was for me, the, the, I think, the point where I really um, could make this transition from research to education. Now, after this position in Zurich, I moved to Lausanne. So this was for professional and for personal reasons. And now I'm working since 10 years at the uh, Unité Pédagogique. You can translate this as a center for teaching and learning at the Faculty of Biology Medicine um, at the university. So what exactly do I do there? The easiest thing for me is to explain this by using three axes. So the first one is my job as a teaching advisor. So teaching advisor means if a professor or a lecturer has an idea of introducing a new teaching method, a new tool, using internet-based resources, I don't know, simulation, whatever, they contact me and then on a one-to-one -one basis we work together to analyze the problem, to identify possible solutions and then to implement these solutions in their teaching course. So this is an activity I really, really like because I'm in contact with many different people, many different disciplines, and um, I can really also use the, the, the expertise I have acquired in understanding the, the, the subject matter um, a lot. So this is the, the, the first part of my activity. Now sometimes these projects become a bit more complicated. So you need resources, more manpower, finances, or also some political support to really develop projects that are a bit larger. And this is where the second part of my work comes in as a project leader. So over the last few years, I've been involved in different projects. Some have been more related to one particular course or one particular discipline. But recently, I've been involved also in several projects that really touch the whole institution. And these are the ones that, for me, give me really um, some new and interesting challenges. Because in addition to the purely pedagogical issues, you have to think a lot about issues related to change management, to institutional culture, and um, to really get people to, to be involved um, and believe in the kind of things you implement. So this is the, 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 the second part. Now, the moment you talk about developing new methods or implementing new tools, you have also to think about training the faculty. And that's really the third part, faculty development. So teaching the teachers. And this is an activity I've been developing more and more and more over the last few years. And I'm now running different workshops they can last from half day up to four days for faculty, so for professors. Um, smaller workshops, they focus on particular areas, can be interactive teaching or things like that, whereas the four-day course really goes through the whole instructional design process, so from defining learning objectives up to really implementation um, of, the, of the idea. And it's really the... Um, this combination of these three activities, for me, that are so interesting because they combine different issues working on small projects up to big ones, and at the same time being able also to train um, the, 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 the faculty to really develop the teaching um, step by step towards the, the goals we have um, defined also at the level of the faculty and the medical school and the school of biology. 
So now you might wonder how useful have been these over 10 years I spent in the lab. So I did a PhD, I did two postdocs. For me, looking back, they have been absolutely essential. And probably the most important part is that it gives me the credibility. So when I'm interacting with um, know, professors, for me it's mostly clinicians, so um, medical doctors, I really have to be able to understand research as a system, I have to be able to speak the same language, and I still think the title is something that's really important. So having a PhD is something that makes a big, big difference. Um, the other capabilities like analytical capabilities, experience in project management, but also knowing how to get funding are as important in research as they are in education. So these are things that I could immediately transfer and use um, also in my second life, if you want. And the general soft skills that have already been mentioned before are important wherever you work. So I hope this gave you a reasonably good idea of what my work consists of now and how I got there, making the move from research to education. And as I said at the beginning, I wanted to um, share with you an idea or a concept that for me is really important with respect to how I think about this kind of job. And um, Monica has mentioned it just before in her talk, and um, I would like to just develop it a little bit over the next couple of slides. So the idea is called the third space. And this concept of third space really based, is based on the work of uh, Celia Whitchurch. She's a scientist and senior lecturer at University College in London. Um, the idea is that historically, universities have been organized in two domains. There's the academic domain and the administrative domain. So the academic domain is mostly um, composed of professors or lecturers. They teach, they do the research, and they also have management positions, mostly on a rotational basis, as dean, as department chair, etc. And then there is the administri administrative domain, can be finances, human resources, um, student services, etc., that make the system really run. Now, over the last few years, for many reasons, they may be political, you know, the Bologna process, the fact that now more and more these accreditation or quality assurance processes are being important, there has been an increase in no people that have been employed at university that have an academic training like me, but who don't work in the academic domain, but neither in the administrative domain. And this is what um, Celia Richards calls the third space. So just to be clear, I, do, I don't want to imply that third space is something bad. It's just something that is less established and less well known because it's relatively new. And on the contrary, it, will, it does at the moment and it will more and more in the future offer many possibilities for people with academic training to move into universities. But what's important for me is that third space has some important implications for how I think about my position and how I think about developing it in the future. And probably the easiest way to um, introduce this, um, this notion is to use my job title. So officially, I'm an ingénieur pédagogique, or if you translate this in English, a learning engineer. Now, the, the, I think, major characteristic of this job title is if I tell some, or somebody asks me what I do, and I tell them I'm a learning engineer, nobody has a clue what this actually means. Because it hasn't been around for a long time and somebody has probably invented this title to give a name to it. And this has um, some consequences because at the end, my professional identity, so as what I'm identified and, and um, recognized within the institution, is less defend, the, defined by my job title, but is much more defined by the projects I work on and by the people I collaborate with. And this is something that is, has, um, I think is quite important with respect to how I behave and position myself within the faculty. Now, there are three aspects that I would like to share with you that I have found are really important um, for, for, for my work. And also, as Nicole said this morning, quite often you take one of these positions five years or 10 years later, the position will be completely different. Because these are things that evolve and really depend a lot on the local constellations and changes. 
So the first implication um, when you have these kind of jobs is that you have to make really sure that your work is visible. Because the, since the job title or the position hasn't been around for a long time in an institution, people don't necessarily come to you to ask you to present your work, your projects, and your accomplishments at the dean's office, at the department conference, or somewhere else. But you have to actually be proactive and ask for the possibility to be able to present. And also make sure it's you presenting it and not somebody else. So that's absolutely feasible. And I think it's also interesting, a challenge you have to, um, to deal with. But it's really important. Because if you don't do, the big danger is that you will do the work, but not necessarily be recognized and not be able to present it um, in a larger context. Now, the second aspect, and this comes down more to personal skills and competencies, is you have to make sure that you really build up and communicate your profile. So I have to, people have to know what my skills and competencies are. Because most of my work is based on projects. If somebody has a problem to solve, and if I would be the right person to help them solving it within the faculty, for example, they have to be able to know that I would be the person to help them and contact me so we can do this together. So if people don't really know what my specific skill set is and what my added value is, then this probably won't happen. Not because they don't like me, because simply they don't know that I can provide this, um, this, uh, this work. So these two issues are really important with respect to how you position yourself and develop your position within the faculty. And if you get these two points right, you, you will also get the support from key people. And that, wherever you do and wherever you work, is absolutely essential at particular times um, in your career. So to finish, I would like to, to leave um, you with three aspects that, for me, looking back at the, this transition from research to education, have been really important. And I've heard also many people discussing this um, during the coffee breaks, especially the first point, because at least for me that was the case, and probably is the case for most of you, but the moment you decide you want to change, you don't know exactly where you want to go. That's extremely unlikely. But I really don't think that's a problem. And you shouldn't be too fixed on the final outcome. I think you should have a global idea of where you want to go, but at the end you have to start by diversifying, seizing all the opportunities you can get, by grants, by networking, whatever. And eventually, things will come together. Or how, um, I think it was also you who said, things will work eventually, and at the end, it works. And I think it actually is true. To combine with the other point that both um, Karl Heinz, I think, mentioned this morning, you should do what you like doing. And don't do something you don't like just because you think it might bring you to the right place. So don't be too outcome fixed and really take things along the way. Now, the second point is more this idea of learning by doing. So that's probably a bit personal, but I, so I'm not saying degrees are not important. For me, the title is important. But still, when you think about new challenges or new, new things you would like to do, I prefer to actually start doing it really live in vivo. So try to get occasions to use and get the knowledge by working directly on the thing you'd like doing and acquire all the knowledge by learning by doing. And then later, if you figure out you need a degree or you need an official paper, you can always do this in a second step. But otherwise, the danger is that you just end up doing trainings and doing certificates and getting paperwork, but not really experience on the job. So really take the courage and just get into it and do it. And the third point, just to link back to this idea of third space, as I said, it's something that um, I think is real because the composition and the way universities work has been changing a lot um, over the last few years. It comes with a couple of risks, because if you don't position yourself, you're not proactive, you don't have, per default, a huge amount of visibility. But it also comes with a lot of opportunities. And personally, I think they will only increase over the next few years, because these kind of um, themes will become more and more important. It comes with a lot of opportunities, and at the end, it's really up to you, once you have a foot in the door, um, to make the most of it and develop the job, at least to some extent, towards the kind of things you'd like doing and enjoy doing 
And then I think there is a lot of possibility in this um, third space that will be available in the next couple of years. So with this, I would like to finish, and I'm happy to take questions. <laughs>